Hello, it's uh, Paul again in this heat wave wet bulb temperature video series. So I've talked in the past about um, feedbacks. Positive feedbacks aren't positive, they're reinforcing feedbacks, they're amplifying feedback. So when we talk about, uh, you know, when you're on Earth Null School and you see temperatures of 50 Celsius in India, for example, remember that because of the urban heat island effect, there's dark surfaces in cities, they're going to absorb a lot more of the sunlight energy. They're going to heat up a lot. It's going to be like a heat dome over the city. Now consider areas in the city where you're in a high rise or you don't have any access to air conditioning. And, you know, you cook a meal and you add the increase the humidity of your um, in, in your in your room. Right. And you pass that wet bulb temperature and you basically they find you a few days later. I mean, this is. But one of the huge feedbacks is that if you're not, so if, you know, you're not, uh, if you're not rich enough to have an air condition, then all the people that are rich enough to have air conditions are further heating the city by running their air conditioning, air conditioners 24 seven, and the exhaust from the air condition, you know, what comes out the other end of the, the heat is removed from inside the room, air conditioning the room, but the heat is in, and humidity then goes outside and it contributes to the, uh, you know, the, the, the intolerable conditions outdoors in a confined city with all of these air conditioning units. So, you know, if you're, if you're on the street or you're not uh, wealthy enough to, to have an air conditioner or even go into a, a, there's not a community center type building where you can go to go and cool down, you're basically uh, finished. So, so uh, you know, it's a horrible heat, heat uh, horrible feedback effect where basically, you know, the rich people are shooting the uh, poor people, you know, in a way you can think of it. So I was showing, uh, you know, heat index in the summer and monsoon. The monsoon's uh, very, very late in India, at least over a week, you know, going on to two weeks uh, even late. Um, and the heat island, the heat index is calculated many different ways. Now, this is obvious a typo. The central business district of Delhi now, there's a confusion between Delhi and New Delhi, so I looked it up, and Delhi is the, um, New Delhi is, it's not really a city, it's an urban collection of people, but Delhi is the region, and New Delhi is, is the, uh, what we'd call the city. Um, so, the heat island there was typically up to, now, this is a typo, this is four degrees Celsius higher than the suburbs, okay, 40, yeah. No. Um, so, of course, you know, electricity demand goes up huge amounts and a, and a power failure, you know, when during one of these heat waves would be fatal to very to a lot of people. Right. It packed in the city. Um, a study of excess mortalities in Asian cities due to urban heat island effects suggests that mortality increases by 5.8 percent per one degree temperature rise over a threshold of 29 in Delhi. So if heat island is three degrees or four degrees, that's a huge percentage rise in mortality in those regions, especially for people that don't have air conditioning. Now, this rise, this rate of rise is, is instead of 5.8% per degree Celsius, it's 1.8 in Hong Kong, for example, because they have better infrastructure to shield its citizens from thermal stress, higher per capita income, so people can, can go somewhere else, visit friends, they have transportation to get away, um, you know, they can take steps to survive. Now, these health effects, uh, the, the, the number of heat wave days in Delhi is 2.3 times that of the adjacent rural areas. That's going to increase to 7.1 times in the short term, 13.8 times in the long term. The frequency of heat waves is going to increase from 0 0.8 each um, summer is that that's maybe days to 2.1 5.1 in short, short and long long term projections the intensity of the heat waves will increase from 40 degrees up to 45 degrees projected to 49 add the 3 to 12 degrees um, that's not 120 c that's 3 to 12 that's supposed to be a, a superscript zero celsius so 3 to 12 degrees celsius um, then we get temperatures of 52 to 61 degrees Celsius, which would make part, large parts of the city basically uninhabitable. Okay, couldn't live in there. Now, it says the heat wave kills 36 people, but um, 
friend, a friend of mine from Europe said he's heard numbers as high as 6,000 already in India, and there's no way 36 is a valid number. I mean, if this, he, yeah, it's just, it's, I don't b believe it. So ACs release waste heat into the ambient environment, okay? A study in Tokyo found that waste heat from air conditioners alone caused a temperature rise of one to two Celsius or more on weekdays in the office areas of Tokyo. This is not a small effect. So air conditioners are a huge effect in Heat Island. And of course, the hotter it gets, the stronger the feedback, because more and more air conditioners are running, and they're running harder and longer. And this temperature rise becomes worse and worse. So this is a, this is a, very, this is a very powerful feedback effect, and it's horrible for people that can't afford to have air conditioners. So it's a huge um, class divider, if you like. Here at Phoenix, the study in Phoenix found that waste heat released from AC systems increased the mean air temperature by more than a degree Celsius at night, inducing increasing increased demand of cooling at night. You know, Paris, the same sort of thing. See, the problem is, is that, uh, you know, night temperatures in India, it doesn't go below 30. So there's no way that the body can recover, you know, unless you have access to air conditioning, right? So it's a cumulative effect. Um, so this is a pattern in May. Um, you know, on a day in May, throughout the day, this is the temperature. So 30 here, 40 here. So the temperature is to 30 at night, goes up to 40, goes back down to about 30. The air conditioning usage, the energy usage will kind of track this. But at night it drops down, people are asleep and stuff. Um, and this is the average demand. Okay, so air conditioning is key uh, to parameter of health problems due to heat waves. It reduces mortality, but it increases street temperature, thus increasing the heat stress on people who don't have access to AC. I think you really need to emphasize this point. Okay, so this is an issue. Now, how do you calculate heat index? Now, I'm not going to go into the gory details. I just want to point out that there's many different ways that people do it. Um, then um, we, you know, we there's something called the Universal Thermal Climate Index. There's also something called the Humidex, which we use in Canada. Um, there's Stedman's Apparent Temperature. There's all these different things. You can Google this paper, um, and uh, it's open source, and find out. I'm just pointing out there's lots of different ways, and there's different statistics and tables, um, some of which I was sort of calculating myself, showing you how to calculate from the site. But these are some of the heat index algorithms that have been used. So this is the heat index in Celsius, temperature in Celsius, temperature in Celsius, uh, dew point in Celsius. This, you can do it in Fahrenheit. Um, you can have one involving the specific, hu uh, ES is the specific humidity. Um, you can have this based on the relative humidity as a percentage, the temperature in Fahrenheit uh, as, a, as a polynomial, um, right? Using all these different uh, equations and things, you know, look at all these different ways. So there's not agreement on what the best system is. The Canadian one is the Humidex. I don't see that one. It's one of these, I assume. Okay, so there's all of these different ways to, to calculate it. But again, it doesn't take account of like the the wet bulb global temperature which I showed you earlier this one takes account of wind speed and cloud cover as well and it, it does these calculations it uses one of those algorithms to, to do the calculation okay so so this is the how to calculate how we calculate heat index now now what I'm going to do now is talk about Okay, so basically, what can we do about it? So, at first I thought if we just had a little pump and ran a fluid through the body and then had a heat exchanger, you know, as was your clothes, we could dissipate heat from the body. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, there's something called the thermo, thermoelectric cooler. And years ago when I worked uh, in high tech for Rockwell International, I did a lot of work with super stable diode lasers and I built a I built some cool chilling devices using thermoelectric coolers to keep the temperature of the laser to within 
one um, thousandths of a degree. Um, you have that capability. Um, and that way, you know, if the temperature changes of a laser, the laser cavity length changes, right? If you increase temperature slightly, the length will, the material will expand. That increases the length of the laser cavity. That makes the wavelength of the laser output slightly longer or the frequency slightly lower. It shifts the laser. So by changing the temperature in small amounts, that's one way you can tune the laser change the wavelength of, or frequency of the output laser, and then you can use it as a spectrometer to tune across lines, uh, uh, absorption lines, uh, for example, um, to measure things like uh, the uh, you know, line, line width and line strength. So for example, the absorption of methane, you know, is it, is it, what is it real time? You know, is it 200, is it 150? Like, I don't know why the number isn't uh, you know, more concrete and, and well known. But anyway, these ther if, you, if you Google thermoelectric cooler, you can put it in clothing, okay? And I'm gonna, you can then, you know, buy it with a battery and the cooler, you can actually cool yourself. And I think people will be wearing thermo TEC, thermoelectric cooler suits. Um, you know, that'll be how people survive outside and combat wet bulb temperatures and things. And not only that, it could be tied to a monitoring system I'm working on the go here, or thinking on the go. So that device I told you that you wear in a necklace or something, it measures the temperature, it measures the relative humidity, it calculates the wet bulb temperature, it has a, a, a feedback to uh, emergency services. So if your wet bulb goes over a certain temperature for a certain length of time, it, may, it probably knows well you're not getting out of the heat, you're, you're at risk of dying in a few hours, you know, they would come in and save you. Um, or a neighbor could, um, and then you. Ha but if you had this control tied to a thermoelectric cooler suit, then it could send the signal to the suit and say we've got to cool. So the suit could be set to keep. You could set the maximum wet bulb, say, thirty degrees Celsius or thirty thirty two, and the suit would cool you um, to keep you basically in that range. So that would be the ideal thing. Um, so if you make a billion dollars and make sure you, you know, you know, put, uh, send a couple bucks uh, my way. Um, so let's have a look at uh, some of the stuff about thermoelectric coolers. So this is a, what it looks like, basically. It's just a device. It's got PN junctions that are thermally connected together. So they're all sandwiched together, so heat goes across them. And they're electrically, they're connected in series. So the... Uh, the one electrical connection is here, and notice that there's it's P, N, P, N, P, like so there's these little cubes, and they're all in series. Um, you put a current through the device, and one side is the cold side at the bottom, and the top side is the hot side. So this would be next to your body within a suit, and this would be, it runs on DC current uh, from a battery, and this would be the hot side where the heat is dissipated away from your body. Okay, so it's perfect for that sort of thing. You can read about more of the specs, but that's basically how it does. It moves heat across from one side to the other side. Okay, so here's a, so here is a, there's a Nike patent that you can have your athletic wear looking like Iron Man suit. So of course everybody wants to look like Iron Woman or Iron Man. So you'd have these little tea coolers. You'd have them around your chest, perhaps. You'd have them in your arm. Um, the wrist is actually the best place. I think I've said in the past that, you know, if you need to cool down quickly, you can put ice cubes on your wrist or you just go into a bathroom. Mostly you don't have ice cubes around. You've got a job interview. You're sweating like crazy. Your, your, your shirt's all wet and it's so humid out and you rush to get there on time. You've got 10 minutes to cool down. What you do is you put your wrists under, you, you run cold water in the sink and you put your wrists under there and you leave them under there for the five minutes, 10 minutes, and then you go into your interview and you're perfectly uh, you know, thermally uh, relaxed with the environment. You're not sweating like a, like a pig, um, thinking, no way I'm gonna get the job. Okay, so there's a, now it says Nike's got a patent on this, and I'm not sure, you know, how their patent can be valid because there's patents from many years ago on this. Um, you know, here's what you could do. Uh, these are getting a bit close to the goods, but, uh, you know, maybe that's an important part to cool down. 
to cool down your overall body. Okay, so I'll continue in, in, on this.